Our current task at hand will be to familiarize ourselves with each of the elements separately and then to comprehend their basic combinations. For this we will have a certain amount of lessons, the objective of which will be a deep dive into an element in order to comprehend, accept and incorporate it into ourselves to a greater degree and quality, as well as to understand its effects, positive and negative, and as a consequence to gain a skill to apply these effects. So the first element that we will try to get to know will be Earth, the primary element. And it is much closer to us than we think, since our physical body is primarily tied to the vibrations of the Earth element. Density-wise, we fit Earth more than the high vibrations of the Atman. On the whole, higher Atman vibrations are not natural to people. Yes, when we connect to Earth, we activate more of the animalistic aspect rather than the human. Meaning nature, which implies that we have a right to live on this Earth. It accepts us, it feeds us, it will not kill us, won't view us as a foreign entity, won't discard us. Naturally, the awakening of this element awakens the quality of accession within the consciousness, the quality of accession to this natural force. As a child being in a mother's womb, he can feel her completely, first of all because he doesn't perceive himself as being separate from her. And in his mind, he can say, this is mom and this is I. The I perception doesn't exist in the mother's womb. Mother's body is a continuation of one's own self. So when we immerse ourselves into the depth of the earth, in theory, we experience the same. Meaning not just being inside mother's womb, but her becoming a part of us. Because it is not just a closed off space that keeps us safe, that protects us, that hides us from something. But her body is an extension of your body. It just is this way. And you don't know yet whether it is right or wrong. You just perceive it all for what it is. So when we immerse into Earth and activate its vibrations within ourselves, we perceive something similar. And the whole planet Earth, along with its natural and unnatural characteristics, becomes part of our consciousness. An inseparable part of our consciousness. Perhaps it is difficult to understand, but it is very important to feel. Why? Because nature doesn't tolerate emptiness. Are you familiar with this saying? If you have separated yourself from her, if you have adopted this belief, if you have abandoned your roots, she will see an empty space instead of you and will fill this space with something else. Eliminating you from the physical plane is in the realm of her abilities. Eliminating you from the social plane is also very much in her abilities. But as a rule, Earth doesn't touch society. Earth is matter. When we awaken Earth within ourselves, first and foremost, this would wake up the inherent natural rhythms. What type of rhythm you should live in order to match her, in order to become one with her, to resonate with her? What food to eat, how long to sleep, where and when, meaning that all of these biological rhythms are awakened by Earth, and this will strengthen your nature here and now. The feeling of life and death comes from correct understanding of one's own biological rhythms. But that is not all. Earth is a treasure trove of information, all information that ever existed on this Earth. If you already lived on this planet, at some point in time, that memory is preserved by Earth. If your ancestors are from this planet and are buried here, the memory exists within the Earth. Characteristically, the Earth has this special quality, finding a place for anything or anyone. No memory is superfluous and no information is superfluous to her. She will never compact it, cut it, making it more comfortable to store. For Earth, for the Earth system itself, 
The understanding of good and bad does not exist. Those concepts are simply absent. Which is why she would never judge any information that comes to her from the position of good or bad. She could judge whether something is needed or not. But again, what for? Useful, not useful. And the most important task for Earth is that there should be life in this world. Everything should live. And whatever has lived should die. Without any bias, simply everyone has its own term. A body has its term, a mind has its term, information has its own term as well. It's a simple biological mechanism, a simple biological clock that regulates life on Earth. The deeper you go into Earth's layers, the more ancient the memory awakens within your bones. The most ancient memory awakens from the vibrations of the Earth element. And every time you dive, I would like you to pay attention that you would enter different realms every time. Because the more you work with your consciousness, the more you change. Therefore, Earth sees you differently and allows you to enter its depth, not according to the you from yesterday, but according to the you that you are today. This is how we get different perceptions from the Earth element each time, right? They are always different. And the more we work on our mind, the more we are able to grasp the volume and the set of new sensations. If one's consciousness is polluted, if it's afraid of life, afraid of death, then their consciousness and vibrations, and therefore the frequency that he can take from the planet, would never go deeper than the first layer, the biological layer, layer of the biological nature, where nature revives and fades, revives and fades, meaning that it dwells between the proto-foundations life and death. But as soon as one gets rid of this fear, as soon as the line between life and death ceases to be so terrifying, as soon as one quits hardening to their own kind and steps away even for a short distance, then his or her consciousness begins to receive somewhat different frequencies, frequencies that belong to a more ancient memory, one's own memory first of all memory of your predecessors, the tradition that they belong to, and partially touching your incarnation memory, but only partially. Because although the second level grants the access to ancestral memory, the access fully opens up only when the line between life and death would be washed out, and not just in words, but in reality. Is my explanation understandable? And the third layer, the deep layer that we immerse ourselves into, is connected directly to the primary causes, to reincarnation, to the experience that you went through when you existed on this earth before, if you were here. Again, this layer connects you to your primary structures, to the forces, proto-creatures that we came from. And I hope that no one is doubting that we didn't come from apes. Clearly not from the apes. Possibly during a genetic experiment there were some genes used in order to mix them up with other genes. But to say that it was a direct path of evolution, it is known that only labor makes a man out of a monkey. <laughs> labor, labor, and more labor. Okay, let's go off of the reincarnating monkeys for now. Thereby, the deeper the immersion, the deeper the memory that awakes. Understandably, one can reach the third, the deepest layer, only after passing through all of the ones before that.
And the more you work with your subcortical region, your consciousness, the deeper you settle. Your existential volume gets heavier, therefore you sink deeper and deeper. So, for example, Greek mythology expresses this process in the form of a triune goddess. Demeter, Rhea and Gaia. Maiden, mother, crone. Demeter understandably embodies the living nature that rules over the primary causes of revival and fading. Rhea rules over the bloodline memory and the germ of the memory that relates to reincarnation. And Gaia rules over the primordial memory, memory of its firstborn ones, the Titans, proto-humans, most old and ancient. Everyone will have their own submersion depth. And the point of this depth is the state of unification, when you can't distinguish yourself from her, a feeling that you yourself is the planet, flying through space. And that the size of your volume, the size of your actual volume, is not that important. And when this happens, you get an energetic exchange, similar to when a baby shares the mom's strength while he's still in her womb. When we immerse ourselves into the earth element, we dive into her womb. And since the frequency that we begin to exchange with her, in order to awaken within our minds certain animalistic desires, are quite dense, very low, very much low. We shouldn't be surprised that these sort of low frequency desires become dominant within our consciousness when we activate the earth element within us. These desires are purely animalistic, eating, sleeping, procreating. Yes, certainly, the mind becomes a bit primitive. There is the outside effect. But it is what it is, as they say. Because since the low frequencies of the Earth are dense, they aren't high, like the ones of the higher bodies, they, of course, do displace the assemblage point abruptly down. But it is a double-edged sword. And the other edge of the sword is that you get a great amount of persistence and survivability. And this is the quality one should focus on. Because if we don't awaken it within ourselves, if we don't show it to Earth, and it must be shown to her that I am yours, don't replace me, I am taking my space, I am not separating myself from you. She must see her child in you. And Earth, to remind you, she's ready to accept all of her children. And the myths also speak about it. She took in absolutely everybody. The ones who turned to her always received her help and support. Even the abyss of Tartarus, the place of the dead, the realm of Hades, it is also located somewhere within Earth. Somewhere within Earth. The Greeks described it in such a way that the distortion of space and gravitation were of such proportions that it causes such effects that don't fit human comprehension. Thus, by immersing ourselves down into the Earth's depths, we can accidentally pop out on the other side of the universe. So the fact that you're being tossed out, there is nothing curious about it. The deeper you go, the closer you get to the center of a distorted place. And it can toss you quite significantly. And not in the direction that you're expecting. But you shouldn't be afraid of it, because if your consciousness is able to go down to these depths, it means that you have a right to do so. If you can't reach it yet, then you don't have the rights yet. It means that your fear of death is still too strong. So the first layer, the layer of Demeter, it simply won't let you pass further down unless you conquer your fear of death. The more you cleanse your astral body, the more you get rid of your small and big fears, the deeper and deeper you are able to submerge into Earth. Accordingly, the information that you're able to get from this realm, out of this depth, also becomes different, changing you to a greater degree. Thereby, these aspects work side by side. And remember that there is not one thing in this world that is better than another. And no element is better than another element. The earth element is a primary cause. 
In order to possess the earth element, many gods have spent thousands of years, as well as the accomplishments of all their pantheons, the predatory wars, getting possession of the rest of the elements, air, fire, water, all of it in order to conquer the earth element. Because she would not submit to them. The price of the matter here is very high. If you take the earth element and she tells you, yes, I accept you, you are mine, then you can draw from that source absolutely everything. The wealth of knowledge is profound there. Besides, it is egregor-free. It is not divided into good and evil, chaos and order, life or death, or love and hate. It has not been assigned to proto-foundations. If we think of the Yggdrasil tree structure, it is the world of Jotunheimr, a place that accumulates information where nothing is filled according to the rules of good and bad because the rule of good and bad is a rule that belongs to the egregors. And Ur says, there is nothing that I cannot use. Demeter, for example, meaning the fertile nature, it will eat anything you bury in it. Come back and take a look in one year, you won't find it. She used all of it up as the food for her children. And Rhea, as the memory, she says, I need it all. I am reminding you that Rhea kept her children safe not in her womb, but in the womb of her husband, Kronos, meaning in time. Everything that happens within time, I need it. I will save it in time. And Gaia keeps her children, her firstborn, within herself still. She says that if it was born, it means that it is needed. It may not be useful today, but it may be useful tomorrow. This is an eternal memory, and we won't decide whether it is needed or not at this point. We will save it. If you are prepared to follow this transformation to the end, then your mental picture of Earth should conceptually change. Earth is a force, the greatest force of them all.